All right, everybody, good Tuesday morning to you. This is going to be an MLB process type video running through the MLB research station at DFSArmy.com. I am your buddy Chapadong, and I'm coming at you representing DFSArmy.com as a senior coach and contributor. One stop shopping for all DFS sports. I just happen to focus on baseball this time of year. I'm so glad we have it back. I hope the Miami Marlins don't mess it all up for us, but we're on a wait and see mode. And as long as slates will be going, I will be playing. So it's just that simple. Follow me out on Twitter at Chapadong or follow the DFS Army account at DFS Army. And let's kind of uh, dive in to a quick, repeatable, simple process that you can run every single day on every single slate. You want to play the 10-game slate tonight, come back and play the four-game turbo. This process works for both. All you need to learn how to do is weed out the teams, look at a few numbers, and then write a few things down, and bang. You can go put those into the optimizers, tweak the, the projections a little bit in your favor, set up your stacks, and just let it eat. That's kind of what we do here at DFS Army in the simplest form, but as complex as people want to make it, as deep as they want to dive into numbers, we got you covered there too. We turn Joes into pros every single day. It's that simple. When I dive into the research station, the opening tab is the batters tab. So what you're going to want to do today is know that the lock, the slate locks, are a little bit earlier today. So I'm going to knock those three games out. I hold the control button down, and I knock those three games off the slate. You'll see them all disappear here. Thank goodness New York and Philly was included in this little slap of games, so I don't have to go double uncheck things. If other games cancel or a PPD happens or something, come in here, hold the control button down, click, 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 knock those games out of there, let the research station reshuffle a little bit, because all of a sudden you'll find yourself, just due to process of elimination, narrowing down your player pool to just the best plays. What I'm going to do is actually start in the starting pitchers tab, but I wanted to show you how I get that thing set up at first. Oh, if you wanted to play on DraftKings, you just go click this one off, hold the control button down, click that one off so it keeps the rest of these blue and you're narrowed down to just the slate of DraftKings games. This is just a little fan duel run because I don't know, 50-50 shot at which one you're gonna wanna play. Come over here to Chop Shop. This is where I start. This was put in here by uh, Benjamin for uh, me actually a couple of years ago because I've kind of invented these little metrics k score and w score i have a video on how to use those vips ask me i'll drop the video each and every time you ask five minutes of showing you how to use these numbers very very simple but for pitchers we want to sort by descending order bring the top k score to the top of the chart and we notice that somebody like an alec mills patrick sand we we notice automatically crappy pitching slate right now, where you might want to dig in a little deeper is figuring out how these teams are using their pitchers. Are they only going four innings? You need five innings. If, if you're the starter, you need five innings to get the win. And the win is very, very important. If you're going to mix and match like I do, you just kind of hope for the best that some of these guys are going to get in there and make those runs. And if not, you know, it, 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 you're not going to be too overly exposed to any particular pitcher. It's not the smartest way to play. It's not the safest way to play. It's the lazy way to play. And... I tend to be a little bit lazy at times when I try to put out all this different content for all these different sports on all these different sites. So that's how I have decided I want to play my game. But you guys might want to dig even deeper and get even bigger, I guess get an even bigger edge as you go. Alec Mills, Sandoval, Merrill Kelly, Carlos Martinez first start in what, a couple of years for Martinez in St. Louis. Miley Bueller, that's an interesting one that he's this low on the list. He must be facing a low strikeout team because Bueller's typically not too bad. But you're going to mix and match on these. I like a number over 500. So I'm not going to be all in on Alec Mills if I make 20 lineups tonight. That would be foolish. But I will probably have an abundance of Alec Mills. I might even give him a little smiley face in the domination station to boost his projections a little bit more to bring him upwards of, say, whatever my max exposure is, 25% on any player, 30, 40, whatever. That's probably about where I'm going to want some Alec Mills depending on whether or not I do a little dig, deeper digging and then find somebody that I like better, like a Martinez or a Bueller, or I decide to get a little contrarian and throw somebody else out there. These are the types of guys I'll usually pay, you know, get a couple of these guys and give them a smiley face to get them up there mixing in with my top exposure pitcher on the night. I want a little bit of balance when I'm running 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 lineups out there. I want a little bit of balance so that I'm not too overly exposed to a guy that has a bad night. It's great when he has a good night, but 
Baseball is very, very volatile, so I try not to overexpose kind of as my general default rule. I will break that rule on occasion when I see things that are necessary, but oftentimes I just don't want to be too overly exposed. The other thing that I'm going to do with the K scores or with the W scores, I'm going to sort that by ascending order, and I'm going to throw all the big numbers down here to the bottom. Why? The W score shows kind of who, when the hitter has the advantage, as just a general rule of thumb. Like I said, look the video up or ask me for it a little bit later. Anything down in here in the dirty reds, those are pitchers that we might want to stack against. So this is the first part of looking for which teams should I key on and which teams should I stack. This shows me teams that hit for a high WOBA versus pitchers that tend to give up a high WOBA against. That's the essence of W score. I look over here for a little bit other tidbits. I want to see this bottom section of red guys. I want to see them red in these sections too. These are numbers like give up a lot of fly balls, give up a lot of walks, don't strike out a lot of people, give up a lot of home runs per nine innings, give up a high whip, give up a high Sierra, which is an indicator of what your ERA should be. If your ERA for Kyle Wright is a 3.5 and his Sierra is a 5.82, it works a little bit like FIP and XFIP in that this is the ERA he should actually be pitching to. So if he's pitching at a 3 whatever and he's showing that he should be pitching to a 5 point whatever, he's going to get whacked, usually fairly soon. So it's a good target to be putting some bats. Does it work every night? No, of course not. But it's an indicator that over the next three, four, five, six starts, his ERA is going to come up. Will it come up all in one bombshell night where he gave up 14 runs? Probably not. But will it come up over five or six or seven starts where he's pitching a little bit worse than he is right now? Yes. And that's where you can take advantage. So I would be stacking over here on the opponent's side. I would be looking to stack guys like these. So let's look. Let me, since I forgot to do this, top of the line for me, probably be about here. So what's that? Molly? So I would come over here. Cubs. Mariners, Athletics, Angels, Mets, Rays. These are the guys, if I was running 100 to 150 lineups tonight, and I wanted a minimum of, say, a couple of percent on each team, just because the Marlins will score 12 runs on occasion, and the Royals will score 14 on occasion. I didn't think it would happen on the second or third game of the, of the season, but I knew across 60 games they're going to be the lead stack a couple of times. That's just baseball. So. Knowing that that's the case, I'm going to want a little bit of it. Now, I can't do this maybe with 20 lineups. So with 100 lineups, I can get a little bit of exposure to everybody. And then I can boost my exposure on the teams that I want to focus on. And that would be your Tampa Bay's, maybe 10% stacks, maybe 10% Mets, maybe, you know, I don't know, 8% Angels, 12% Oakland, 15%. I don't know, whatever it is that choose those numbers up. I'll do another video someday showing you how I'm setting up the domination station because it makes a lot of sense when you're running out a lot of lineups and you're wanting to stack things. But I'm getting a little bit familiar with it myself as of right now because we've got a new stack functionality in there and I'm deciding, you know, which way I really want to kind of take this thing because whichever way I decide, I'm going to stick with it. Same thing should go for you. Don't make changes today and then change it tomorrow and then change it the next day and change it the next day. You're, ne you're just going to chase your tail. You're never going to know what's working and what's not because you're really relying on luck. If you stay with the same system, that's why I'm trying to show you this repeatable process. If you stay with the same system each and every day, then you can find out two, three weeks later, are you running cold or are you? is it bad? You make one little change. Did it help? Did it hurt? Whatever. And now you can get an idea of how to refine your process. And that's part of what we do inside the Army in teaching you and coaching you how to become a better player. These are the stacks I focus on, like I said. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the batters tab. And I'm going to see who is really going to show up here, what teams. Sometimes it's different. Sometimes it's the same as the teams we just mentioned. Come back over to the W score. Sort that by descending. Bring the big numbers to the top. Because, again, I want guys hitting for a high WOBA facing a pitcher that's giving up a high WOBA. That's what's going to lead that number to being bigger. So as I scroll back over here, I want to see which teams. Tampa, 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 four on the front page. Mets, 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 Mets. Cubs, Cubs, Cubs. Seattle only in there once. So even though Seattle's a great team to stack tonight based on facing a bad pitcher, I might temper my expectations on them a little bit because they clearly just don't have the offense to do a ton of damage to that pitcher. They might blow up for 10 runs, but they might disappoint and only put up two or three runs 
and I'm going to probably, instead of being 10 or 12% on Seattle, I might be like 6%. I know they're in a better place, so I'll give them a little bit of a boost. But I'm not going to boost them as much as I would maybe the Mets or maybe the Rays or somebody who's hitting both charts. They're hitting against a bad pitcher, but they're also showing that they have the offense. They have their own individual Wobas to do that damage and kind of keep the bases churning for big rallies. That's what I'm trying to figure out. And this is just the quickest way to go about doing it. You can look at all these other numbers if you want and just go blind. But Chop Shop really sorts that all, pairs all that down for you very, very quickly in an all-inclusive number. Okay? The other thing that I will do as numbers populate a little bit more. So see, we've already got it. We've got uh, lower Seattle expectations, but have a little bit more of them than everybody else. Focus on the Mets. Focus on, um, who was the other one? Focus on, well, shit, short-term memory. I'll go back over here. Focus on Tampa Bay. You know, Boston's always a pretty strong play. They've been disappointing you lately, which is great. The more they disappoint you, the more you should actually be upping your exposure to them because they're not going to stay down forever. And everybody else in the world is getting pissed off at them and is going to say, instead of 15%, I only want 10%. Instead, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a smart guy and I'm going to fade the Boston Red Sox. That's when they're going to blow up for 10 runs. And that's when that guy's going to be all over Twitter bitching his head off about how he can't ever time them right. Yeah, it's because you chased your tail. When the world gets greedy, you need to get a little bit fearful. But when the world is fearful, you need to get greedy. You need to understand that the world hates Houston right now, so they're getting a little bit lower ownership than they otherwise should. And that's when you stack the crap out of them because nothing really changed unless their cheating was really a real deal, which it was, but they were still a good offense without the cheating, right? Anywho, that's what you use the chop shop for. I will use the trends tab a little bit later. Give me another three or four games because I follow this L7 WOBA quite a bit. I'll sort by that, I'll sort by plate appearances, and then I'll start comparing this L7 WOBA to a, a larger sample of 30 days or season numbers. Who's running hot, who's running hot, and those are guys I'm going to go into my domination station. I'm going to boost their projections because I'm going to want, if Mike Trout's running hot, I'm going to want, I don't care what his price is for tournaments, I'm going to want to see more Mike Trout in my lineups. If he's running cold, I'm going to want to see a little bit less. I'm going to understand that Mike Trout can snap out of it any given time, but I'm going to tend to try and play the hot hands, especially when they're in great matchups, which is what I just showed you with who's facing a bad pitcher and who has the high woba to be able to handle it. That's what we do. That's just the basic repeatable process. It takes two or three minutes every day to click, 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 write some names down, write some teams down, then jump into the optimizer and start making your tweaks and setting things up. Basic ideas of stacking lots of teams, and we'll get into more details on that. So like and subscribe to the video because you're going to get lessons as we go, but where you're really going to get the lessons is on the inside as a VIP, where you can monopolize my time and ask me every single question that you want. Other uh, you know, DFS coaches that we have that do phenomenal work in little different ways. I'm focusing a little bit more on you know the mass multi-entry type of stuff because that's how I enjoy playing right now. I used to build ladders. The ladder system has been linked in videos. I used to uh, play a lot of cash games, whatever. You can win playing those too. You might follow a different coach who might set you up a little bit you know, differently there with a little bit different thought process because I don't care about the prices of players anymore. I care about mixing a lot of different lineups together with team stacks and getting a variety of team stacks in the teams that are in good spots. And then I'll let the rest of that happen. I mean, I understand that when Mike Trout goes from, you know, 6,000 to 6,500, a lot of people are going to be off of him. I understand he won't even go into my optimized lineups as much because he won't be quite the value play that the, op that the optimizer is looking for. But then that's when I boost his projections and force him in anyway. These are all the nuances that you can learn, that we can teach you, that we have learned over time by being here, you know, for five, six years and constantly teaching people. That's what keeps us sharp as well. And that's what will help us then translate all of that down to you and help you become a better player. If you're finally in the spot where you want some coaching and want a little bit of advice to speed up all of the trial and error that you've been going through, or maybe speed up the losses of thousands of dollars and actually mitigate those losses as you go. That's what we're here for. That's what we thrive on. And that's what we want to help you do. But you can only do it as a VIP. So you really got to get inside here. Use that coupon code down there in the comments section. Like I said, 
like, subscribe to the video, follow us on Twitter. You get all of that information as often as we put it out, and I guarantee you, you will become a better player over time if you plug into us and ask us questions so you can get the answers that you need to improve your game. Take care, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow or Thursday, and uh, we'll probably start talking some PGA and some other things as we go. This has been, what, about 15 minutes of a repeatable process to get you started for today. I'm ChopaDogDFSArmy.com, and I'm out of here.